Warning, the story ahead mentions blood and the story is more of a dark, twisted romance not meant to be viewed by young and easily impressionable audience. The metal doors had opened, revealing rows of cylindrical glass tubes containing the extracted colors from the victims of the machine. It was a device used to violently squeeze out every drop of essence, blood, and color, whatever was contained within these tubes. Boyfriend felt nauseous, he could just smell the bloody scent that lingered in the air of this very room. The ginger-colored male, however, was used to it. If anything, Pico was all too proud of this, of what he and the members of the facility had spent years working on. Isn't it beautiful, babe? Pico asked with a smirk, his dark, sunken eyes, worn from years of toiling in this horror show of a facility, simply gazing at boyfriend, seemingly indifferent to the fact that the blue-haired male appeared on the verge of throwing up. N no. Boyfriend managed to mutter out, though unfortunately, it came out rather weakly, a fact he didn't want to admit. He never wanted to sound weak in front of anyone. However, he didn't expect today to walk in on his crush being a murderer of magical slash supernatural creatures, creatures like himself. An angel. Did Pico bring him here because he knew of that fact? Did he plan to kill him? You're an angel, aren't you? Boyfriend felt his blood run cold as he heard Pico say those very words. His fear, bubbling up from within, rose, he could feel his hands shaking. His eyes threatened to tear up, but he refused. If he showed fear, it would only make things worse. Could he try to play dumb? No. That wouldn't work. Pico was too smart for that, he would know he was lying. The sound of his rapid heart beating from terror was starting to become painful on his chest. His mind was scrambling on what to do. What to do? I'm not going to kill you, boyfriend. Pico declared. At his words, boyfriend lifted his head in shock. The blue rapper, who had been looking down in fear this whole time, felt a surge of suspicion but also a strange sense of relief at what Pico had just said. Was he even being honest? He sounded like he wasn't lying based on his tone. Though, by this point, boyfriend wasn't too sure anymore. Th then why bring me here? He stuttered out. Pico let out a bit of an insane chuckle as he found such a question quite amusing. He patted the other's shoulder, as if being consoled by an old friend at the bar after hearing a particularly funny joke. His hands still bore colorful stains from the extracted hues mixed with blood. Boyfriend considered moving Pico's hand away, but he hesitated, not wanting to provoke the ginger-haired man in any manner, especially when he found such a straightforward question worthy of comedy in a twisted sense. Pico inhaled deeply, endeavoring to regain his composure, letting out a couple more chuckles before finally responding. his hand from boyfriend's shoulder, leaving behind a stain, a red and blue handprint. As for why I brought you here, well, originally I was supposed to kill you. Your number came up after all. Pico was saying all this nonchalantly. Boyfriend couldn't help but question how on earth he sounded as if he were just having a conversation with friends. But I didn't wanna. Pico shrugged, his mouth forming a cat-like smile, as if he were being... playful? But... why? I... I mean, it's not that I want to die... But... why are you changing your mind? Even though he might regret the answer, Pico had taken him into the deepest parts of the facility. He showed him all of this. He just had to know the reason, even if it was something messed up. Pico looked him directly in the eyes. Unexpectedly, Pico wrapped an arm around him, pulling boyfriend close. 
The blue-haired male was stunned and speechless, and something he didn't expect happened. He felt his own face flush a pinkish hue. <laughs> Boyfriend squeaked out, not expecting, after everything Pico had shown him, that he still had feelings for the deranged ginger. Their faces were way too close to one another. Boyfriend could practically feel his breath as he spoke. He felt every part of him shiver, but in a different way this time, instead of fear. It was a feeling of desire. The blush had reached all the way to Boyfriend's ears, and he knew to softly close his eyes when Pico did, their lips hovering tantalizingly close. With a whisper, Pico said, I want you by my side through all this madness. Before he and Boyfriend shared a deep kiss of passion, was this manipulation? Who knows? All Boyfriend knows is that he's lost in the sweet feeling of sharing lips with the person he'd been admiring. It was as if this was a beautifully twisted dream come true.